Hello Internet, my name is Edge Q and I'm an Internet Critic. That's the only intro I have so far, so uh... <clears throat> you may recognize me from those Disney Q videos where I review a Disney movie. However, I decided to stop doing those because I didn't feel that they were unique enough for YouTube. So right now, I'm currently working on a new theme. Until then though, I found this neat little challenge for me to do. Some of you may be familiar with fellow YouTube reviewer Bob Joe. If you aren't, he's basically a critic who focuses on low-budget family entertainment films, including the Buddy films, the Hero of Color City, Sense of Alino, and his most notorious one, Cool Cat Save the Kids. However, while reviewing the Alpha and Omega series, a troll began harassing him for his negative opinions, so much so that he began painting him as a cyberbully, because apparently anyone with a different opinion is a bully regardless of how they share it. Anyway, fed up with this troll, Bob Show challenged him into sharing his own review and posting it on Bob Show's channel. He refused, but apparently so many people were excited to try this idea out that Bob Show decided to extend the challenge to all of YouTube. Well, Bob Show, I accept your challenge. So let's get started on this review for Alpha and Omega Dino Digs. In case you're wondering, no, I did not accidentally pop in a copy of the Alpha and Omega video game. This is what the animation looks like. Now I know some of you expect me to go on a long rant about the quality of the animation here, but here's the thing. I don't think judging a movie just by its animation is a fair thing. Take Hoodwinked, for example. Sure, the animation in that movie wasn't really good, but because it had a clever concept, some good performances, and some really clever writing, it actually worked as a pretty solid movie itself. Besides, this is a directed DVD animated movie, so what if the animation's not really good? I mean, as long as it's got a good heart, good story, good characters, it's all good. This does have those, right? Mm. Ah, crap. The movie begins 65 million years ago, which looks exactly like the present day wilderness apparently, as a Barney colored dinosaur is being chased by a T-Rex. The film describes it as a raptor, but I refuse to believe that since, well, no killing claw on its feet. Back at the present, the area has suddenly become a sacred burial ground. Why is it sacred? Mac, you built a golf course in a nature reserve? Our nature reserve, brother. While you were away getting your fancy education, I was creating business from our land. Hey, I don't think you should worry about your twin brother getting a fancy education because apparently you have all the money and the know-how to go through God knows how many hoops in order to build a golf course at a nature preserve, which, legally speaking, is illegal! You're digging up sacred grounds too? Spirits are buried here! <laughs> No, the so-called spirits are actually dinosaur skeletons. Dinosaur skeletons? And I found a museum who was willing to pay tens of millions of dollars for these bones. We'll be very rich. How was a dinosaur alive for 65 million years? <laughs> Just you wait. For now, we meet our main characters, Humphrey and Kate, moving into a new cave via... a real estate wolf? So, you two decided to take the plunge and move to Wolf Burbia? 
Well, I hear it's very safe here. We have a problem with rogue wolves in our area. And with three pups who have a tendency to get into preteen trouble? Well, no rogue wolves here. Your pups will be very safe. And here we go! Uh, I knew it! Kate, this cave is made of plastic? It's actually recycled material. The unnatural is the new natural. Normally, I would probably point, make fun of how a wolf does human things, but honestly, since that's the main thing that this troll keeps acknowledging that, hey, this is an anthropomorphized cartoon, apparently wolves can get away with that, I'm just gonna let it slide for the sake of argument, okay? But I will question one thing. <clears throat> Why is the cave made of plastic? How does that make a lick of sense? How can the script writers confuse the idea of man-made caves to equal plastic? And look at this cave! If it's supposed to be plastic, the movie is basically implying that the entire mountain is plastic. Why the heck would you make a life-size plastic mountain? That doesn't count! Okay. Okay. I'm calm. I'm calm. Let's just... <clears throat> Let's just, uh, continue, shall we? Kate and Humphrey are visited by their friends Marcel and Patty, who are ducks that play golf, but the real estate agent isn't too fond of them. What? Uh, Bert, out of here now! Shoot! Shoot, I have a sale in progress! No, you are here to make bird droppings on my sidewalk! A bird droppings on your sidewalk? How about a bird dropping in your eye? And I just ate a lot of fiber. <laughs> No! 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 I am so sorry, movie. You had your chance, but you just lost it. No. God. No. Marcel and Patty end up approving the cave because golf course, and the couple decide to bring their pups to their new. Ah! Ah! Uh, what the heck are those? These are supposed to be puppies. They look like pieces of turd with fur and legs and a face. I mean, I guess I can understand that they're trying to make these guys look cute, but that's not cute. Big eyes does not automatically equal cute. Look, this is cute. This is not. Anyway, the pups aren't exactly liking their new home, so they run off to explore the woods. And Kate, being the ever so overprotective mom, just lets them go. Uh, why are we following these guys? Wait, are these the actual main characters we're following for the rest of the film? <laughs> no! God! This is gonna suck. Seriously, and did you hear Mom say that we're always getting into trouble? As if we walk right into situations. You just jinxed it. Hey there, are you okay? By the way, this dinosaur, named Amy by the way, has this weird habit of saying, oh crickets. Oh crickets, oh crickets, oh crickets. Why does she say that? Are crickets sacred to dinosaurs? I mean, I don't get it. Let's give this a dust up. No, 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 they're dead, they are dead, they cannot survive that, no, no, no. Wow, well, we all wanted the wild and that tops it. <sighs> to paraphrase Bob Show, if these characters can't get hurt from something as serious as this, then why should we be worried for them? 
Meanwhile, Marcel and Patty try to teach Humphrey how to play golf, much to his humiliation. not suited for golf. Did you see how bad that swing was? I heard that! <laughs> okay, that was actually kind of funny. Humphrey, are you okay? Uh, oh, nice of you to join us. So the pups oddly very quickly get used to the idea of a live dinosaur in front of them as Amy explains where she came from. 65 million years ago. My mom used to tell me if I was in trouble with predators, I was to run to the sacred space and look for a circle of light. It was an area of protection. down to the wrecks his spirit will also emerge he is huge and ruthless and will destroy everything in his path they need to leave this area alone or they will be very sorry so basically she's a dinosaur ghost yeah that makes sense the diggers suddenly come back but the pups manage to distract them by are you ready for this driving their truck how do they know how to drive a truck? How do they know how the car goes forward or how does it steer? How do they know to release the parking brake? How? How do they even start the ignition? I mean, I know the keys were still in the truck, but you still have to turn the keys to actually start it. Wow, those wolves are something else. Meanwhile, Kate and Humphrey meet Patty and Marcel by a fountain and... Humphrey, Kate, pretend you didn't see that. I'm already trying. So after whatever the heck that was, we meet the pups and Amy again. Oh, you made it back. Good job with getting rid of those diggers. Well, it's only temporary. They'll be back tomorrow. 
and there will be more of them. Okay guys, here's what you need to do next. Just go back to your parents, who are probably wondering where the heck you are, tell them the situation, and then come up with a brilliant... Well, I want to see what the world looks like now. This may be my one and only time. Then you'll see the world as we see it. Come on, we'll show you around. Or just take Amy out sightseeing. I'm really starting to think you need to work out your priorities. So, where did they take Amy? Well, you'd think they'd probably show her the wonders of the human world, like cities or cars or whatnot. But nope. Where do they go instead? Their old home where they howl at the moon. <laughs> Sorry, I don't think howling is in a dinosaur's anatomy. Suddenly, their visit gets interrupted by rogue wolves. But it's okay because Amy scares them away. Well, that was pointless. On their way back, they suddenly see- oh no. So after that, we cut back to Humphrey and Kate and, wait, it's the middle of the night. A whole day passed? You mean these two parents weren't looking for their pups all day? <laughs> Moving on. So the pups do what they should have done ages ago and tell their situation to their parents. Let me organize my thoughts. According to Amy the Dinosaur, we have to stop the digging or there'll be a giant T-Rex unleashed, but we need to do this in time for Amy to go back to the sacred burial ground, but it has to be timed with a ray of light so she can return back to her former existence. Did I miss anything? Dad, Mom, may I offer some parenting tips? No, but you're gonna do it anyway. You raised us to be kind, caring, and always wanting to help someone in need. And that is why we often get into situations. Well, we're in one now, and Amy's also our friend. Thanks for reminding us what this family stands for. So let me get this straight. The pups, who, as far as I'm aware, constantly get into trouble all the time, are saying it's okay because their parents taught them to be kind and helpful to others? That is the dumbest reason I've ever heard. It sure is. I mean, I haven't watched the other sequels, so I don't know how this moral supposedly applies. But in context of this story, it's completely moot. The only situation that these guys got into was meeting Amy in the first place. And that was after ignoring your parents and running off. You weren't being kind and caring at that time, you were just being rebellious. Thanks for reminding us what this family stands for. No! What you should be saying is... Alright, pups, we'll help you get Amy back to the circle of light, but after this, you're grounded! Lot of human workers and they have guns and there's no way to stop them without someone getting injured oh sure and danger your only food source here that's a good idea and then this happens You know, I just realized something. 
God, that T-Rex looks ugly. What the? Is that a live dinosaur? How the heck did that happen? Run! Well, maybe having a T-Rex is not all bad. Mm, that's not funny. This would be funny. <laughs> Maybe having a T-Rex is not all bad. So the T-Rex runs around, not really doing anything, kind of disappointing. I mean, it does toss the mean brother away. And I think he killed him because we never see him for the rest of the film. Oh, and it destroys the artificial home. But since everybody seems to be fine and not all upset by it, why should we? Burns are your descendants, right? Yes, but I can't fly out of here. And is T-Rex from the bird family too? Yeah. Oh no. We just have to get him close to the fountain. You're not. I see, and the music will hold him. <laughs> That's right, turns out those random music numbers at the fountain served as a plot point. And here I was still trying to pretend they didn't happen. already but this is gonna be the dumbest thing you've ever seen in a kids movie okay it's uh, incredible if you if you're holding something like you have this on your phone or your tablet please put it down you'll be tempted to hit yourself with it <sighs> okay go ahead just think about it what am I looking at a Tyrannosaurus Rex, the king of the dinosaurs, the most iconic dinosaur in the whole world, is dancing to pop music with a Barney colored dinosaur. This is just, what the heck were they thinking with this scene? In fact, what were they thinking with this whole movie? With a title like Dino Digs, I would have expected maybe the wolves running amok at a prehistoric dig site and having to stop someone from stealing dinosaur bones. I know it sounds kind of lame, but at least that would have been okay. I mean, this is just... Thankfully, the music stops and everyone manages to get the T-Rex back to the dig site. The pups give Amy their final goodbyes. Goodbye, Amy. We'll miss you, Amy. We love you, Amy. Forever. We'll come here often. So with help from the caribou, they fill up the dig site. Because, yeah, caribou can apparently dig with their antlers in this world. And the final lesson is learned. Now, we will never disturb nature again. Yep, because that's what the movie was all about. Oh wait, no, no, I'll tell you what the movie was really about. An hour too long! It is incredible. I mean, beyond believable. So many people putting so much effort into making a simple kids movie this awful. The story is stupid, the animation looks terrible, the jokes don't work, the characters are incredibly bland, the moral is completely backwards, and the designs are just so ugly. I mean, God, it was painful. Bottom line, this movie is awful. But, since I was doing it for Bob show anyway, I guess it was kind of worth it. Well, that's it for now. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta wash that T-Rex dancing scene off my brain. a dog cone when you need one.